reloaded and we loaded up and we loaded up with another video exclusive early morning exclusive with Larry Nelson versus Pastor Jack plus more okay now my brother how you doing Larry Nelson I'm doing a okay yourself I'm doing awesome it's good to hear from you yeah, same here, same here. But I'm not happy about the circumstances now, but it is what it is. I'm, you know my style. I'm going to give you the floor, and I'm going to allow you um, allow you to speak. You share, you know, your feelings, and let me just make this very clear. This is not to, uh, to degrade, disrespect any uh, race, religion, group, uh, person, gender, or violate anyone in any shape, form, or fashion. All right? Um, brother, uh, Larry Nelson is going to speak now uh, anybody wants to call in after he shares his thoughts um, his opinions and his facts um, then you know if I feel like opening up the lines I will if not we won't but we will the next day go ahead brother well thank you for allowing me to be on your show and everybody's been asking me over and over again what happened with the Jack situation so I guess I will just try to open up on your show and tell you exactly what happened. Uh, <clears throat> a couple, I guess maybe a week or so ago, CS turned around and made, posted some pictures of a bunch of naked women on her page. <clears throat> and she said that, uh, you know, this is Larry Style, this is the women he messed with or whatever like that. And uh, Jack is the mole. Jack is alone. I'll go into that in detail for a second, but I'll go to the beginning. Okay, this is exclusive. He, uh, what? Wait, oh, shit, go. What the fuck? <laughs> truth is truth. Lord Jesus, hold on. Let, let me get my asthma, let me get my asthma pump, Larry. Go ahead. <laughs> um, well, what happened was, um, there was a young lady, I'm going back a few weeks earlier. There was a young lady on YouTube uh, that I would make videos of, uh, from my kitchen table. And I showed this Bible that I got, you know, just goofing off. And on my live, a uh, lady kept asking me, get, her name is uh, Cheryl. Cheryl kept asking me, can she get this Bible? I want the Bible. And I said, okay, I'm going to ship it to you. Now, if you make a live video and say that, you can't be a liar. I said, okay, I'll ship you the Bible, no problem. Well, every day, every time I make a video, she would turn around. I'm waiting on my Bible, waiting on my Bible, but I couldn't let her know. I paid so many bills, I'm broke. Every time I'm like, just give me a couple weeks to check day, then I ship it off. Well, I heard from her every single day. Her email gave me her name, address, city, state, zip code, and talked to her one time on the phone, just one. And when she told me she was a senior citizen from Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, kids are grown, and she likes the Bible. She's a Christian, and that's it. So we talked maybe five minutes. Uh, she gave me all her information, name, address, city, state, zip code, the house she lives in. And so I said, this is where I'm going to ship the Bible to. Okay. That was the one and only time I ever heard her voice on the phone. Okay, so I shipped her the Bible. Now, keep in mind, for three weeks, she's on there every day. Where's the Bible? Where's the Bible? Where's the Bible? As soon as I sent her the Bible, now I want to know, did she get it? Did she get it? Did she get it? She even went ghost on me. So I, you know, I'm waiting on a response. I'm waiting on a text message or something, at least a call. I did not want to thank you. I did not want to know, oh, God, praise you, Larry, for this praise you. I didn't want that. All I wanted was her to say, I got the Bible. Uh, um, it's here. And um, I'm, you know, thank you. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Or oh, just at least acknowledge that you got it so I know it came. Well, I never heard from her, so I kind of left it alone. I'm checking out Jay Wilson's live one day. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, I'm checking out Jay Wilson's live one day. And lo and behold, she's on there uh, in the comment section. And she's saying, don't trust Larry Nelson. He's not what he appears to be. And I'm looking at it real good when this is a troll page, but this is her page. I click on it, and it's her. And I'm wondering, what is she talking about? So what happened was, uh, remember I had her number, but it's in my email. I go through my email, pick a number out again, because like I said, I ain't heard from her since she got the Bible. I'm thinking, did she get the Bible? Is she mad because she didn't get the Bible? What is it? Well, I called. There's no answer. So what I 
think it was I left a message. I said, um, well, I hung up. I called a second time, thinking that she picked up the phone. No answer. So what I did was I turned around and said, well, you know, um, hey, I said, this is Larry. I said, I don't know what I did. I said, I've been watching Jay's live. I don't know what I did to you to make you talk about me, whatever it is. Tell me so I can... <laughs> Tell me so I can fix it. I said, the only, the only communication you and I have ever had was me saying I was going to sing you this Bible. And uh, I said, then, then you didn't win ghosts. I, I haven't heard nothing from you. I said, tell me what's going on so I can apologize. I said, but then, then I stopped in the middle of the sentence. I said, you know what? You don't have to tell me. I come to realize this is you too. This is what people do. Everybody talks about each other. I said, I said no hard feelings, no, no harm done. I hope you enjoy your Bible. God bless you. Goodbye. That was the one and the only time I ever left her message. I only heard her voice on the phone one time when she gave me all the info. Uh, after that, Pastor Jack goes quiet for two weeks. Now, keep in mind, for two, you know, every day, I hear from him on my way to work. You know, I drive an hour to work. Jack is on there. What's going on, man? How you doing? So we talking a while. I'm on my way to work, and he's almost at work. So we talk for about an hour about everything. Make a long story short, uh, I'm asking him, like, uh, you know, uh, what's going on, man, blah, blah, blah. Well, he hasn't said anything for two weeks. So I'm wondering, what's going on? My, my, my friend, you know, the guy got my phone number. Uh, he and I planned actually to come see you, and you know this. Uh, we were all going to come see you out there one week or whatever and just hang out in, uh, in your state. And then he turns around and he goes ghost on me. So that's about, are you still there? Yes, I'm listening. I'm just listening to you. I'm giving you Okay. Four. So uh, for two weeks I haven't heard from him. So finally, uh, I get a new phone or whatever he calls. Because he's the first call that comes in on my new phone. I said, man, where have you been, dude? I've been calling you for two weeks. And his voice is not that upbeat. Hey, what's going on, brother? It's, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, what's wrong, man? He said, well, man, your name is a lot of messes. I just want to know what was going on. Mm -hmm. so I'm thinking somebody said something about me and him. Well, he wants to know about somebody saying, uh, uh, well, the lady that I sent the Bible to now has told him, I didn't even know they were in communication, that I have, uh, I was sending her text messages on another phone with another area code mm -hmm. threatening, her life, uh, threatening her, cussing her out. Mm -hmm. No, 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 not threatening her, just cussing her yeah, out. Yeah, using um, out. A, per, a, a profound profanity in a very aggressive way. Yeah, in, in text messages or phone. Yeah, in text, yeah, text message form. Yeah, but, but it was a, um, it was, uh, it was from a number that was from a different area code. My right. area code 618. Right. They have one phone. And so, I told Jack, this is the first time I've heard this. He said, yeah, but, uh, you gotta explain to me what's going on, man. So, being a friend, I never had a problem with that. I'll tell you. So, I said, well, I said, uh, I was waiting for it. He said, she got the Bible. I said, okay. Now, he had to tell me she got the Bible. I said, well, I said, I've, um, I waited for her to contact me. She didn't. I said, I was just wondering why she's talking about me on Jay Wilson's live. After she got the Bible, it's like, we have never had no conversation or nothing. So, he was like, yeah, well, you know, uh, she said you've been texting her from a different area code. I said, but you know, of all people, I only have one phone. Mm -hmm. You talked about that because he has two landlines. He has two phones. Right. One for the public and then one for certain people. Right, and was, right. And I had both of the numbers. And so uh, he would ask me in the past, you know, you need two numbers. I said, I only got one. So I said, you of all people know I only got one number. What's going on? And so after we talked about Timmy, he said, you know what? Now I believe you because I talked to you now, man. And I got offended when he said that because I'm like, you you believe me after I told you I did not call the senior citizen and curse her out. But as a friend, you should know my character. I never had nothing against her to even say anything about it, good, bad, or ugly. All I want to know is did she get the Bible and then with the Jay Wilson thing, I was just in question marks like, why are you talking about me? I mean, I didn't even form an opinion to be mad. I'm like, what did I do? Tell me. Once I form an opinion, then I can, you know, come to a conclusion. But uh, she, she more or less um, never said anything that was it. So um, he said he believed me after he talked to me, which, you know, I, it kind of caught me off guard. But after he said that, he turns around and... Um, uh, said he was talking to her and uh, a lady named Rochelle who does a lot of prayer on YouTube.
YouTube or whatever. And, you know, Rochelle did a live video where she said that she believed the lady that I would, uh, uh, I cursed the woman out. And it kind of caught me off guard because I'm like, she did nothing to me to text her or say anything to her. So why is everybody on this beast thing? I don't know this woman. We talked one time and she wanted a Bible that doesn't constitute you being mad at somebody. No. So Jack said at one point on the phone call, you know, I want to, uh, uh, put y'all on three way, but she refused to do it. I said, You could have called me. I mean, so she refused to do it. That either gives me the impression that either she's lying or Jack's lying. That's wait, wait, who, who, uh, who, uh, with the three way, who are you referring to? Cheryl Burnett or, um, Bur Burnett, the one who got the Bible, Miss Burnett. Okay. Uh, he, he asked her, uh, with Rochelle on the phone, let's all call Larry. Let him explain because they're talking about me. I don't know nothing about this call, no nothing. Right. All, all I know is I sent the Bible to a woman who went ghost. That's all I know. So well, they're, you know, she got. With me. She, um, um, Auntie, she got caught, you know, Roche, Auntie Rochelle, she got caught up in the middle. She had nothing to do with that. And she was, you know, de de defending you. She didn't want nothing bad. She didn't even want this for anybody to even know about it. It wasn't that serious, but it could be taken very serious after everything that you have experienced in the false allegations and the things. I mean, you... What you experienced online is one of the most nastiest things on top of what I've seen with Mona Simone that I've ever seen and Sean Bradley that I've ever seen on online. I ain't never seen nothing like this before. But go ahead. Well, uh, with Rochelle, like I said, I appreciate it, but I'm going by what I saw. On mm -hmm. her live one day, she said that uh, um, the lady I sent the Bible to, what's her name again? Cheryl Burnett. I'm sorry, I don't even call her name that much. Uh, Cheryl, but then she said, Cheryl told her about the uh, text message from the different number, some different area code, that it came from me, and she believes it. And to me, it's like, how can you form an opinion of belief or not belief if you haven't even talked to me? They, they gather one side, and that's why a lot of black men today are in prison because somebody said, eat it, and you don't hear the other side. You have to get both sides before you form a conclusion. I never had nothing against this woman. I still don't. And if you know my history on YouTube, if I have a problem with somebody, I'll talk about it on the video. I'll throw them off. I'll talk about Caroline. He had a problem with me. I'll talk about him on video. Uh, Tim Blaine talked about me. I'll talk about him on video. That's one that I like, can say. You will come out and, you know, say your piece. Yeah. So now, where is the situation where I got a problem with Rochelle or uh, uh, Burnett? I don't. I still don't. I just know that whoever called her, if it's true, I don't have nothing against you to text you about no whatever. And then, of course, if you have nothing to hide, you should have been able to get on the phone. You didn't answer my phone call. And, uh, um, you know, Pastor Jack said that he tried to put us on three-way and you said no. So it's something that you're trying to hide, not me. But, you know, I'm past that God bless her, and I, I hope she enjoyed her Bible. But uh, <clears throat> as far as me and Jack falling out, what he did was uh, he said, uh, I told Jack, just in the course of our friendship, I said, man, listen, after uh, Bonnie sat there and tried to burn my name up, I've had hundreds of women on YouTube sit there and say, you can trust me, you can trust me, and they start sending new pictures. New pictures, right? And I would send them to them. I would say, look, look at the stuff I have to go through. Now, I did that not being braggadocious. Don't turn me on, okay? You've seen Nikki pictures. I've seen them. That ain't nothing. Right. What, I, what I did was I was showing him, this is what I have to go through, and this is the side of YouTube that people don't know. Right. What, now, turn around. What happened was he turned around, and those exact the same pictures that nobody in the world has, he sent them to VS. Wow. I know he did because he's the only person in the world that I sent them to. When now, how long ago was it when you sent the uh, pictures versus when you found out the pictures were shared uh, with, um, you know, VS? Uh, I sent them maybe about two months ago. About two months. Okay. Yeah. So why do you? Okay. Well. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you said uh, earlier at the beginning of when we got on the line that Pastor uh, allegedly, uh, you know, our brother Pastor Jack is a mole. Can you? Uh, yeah. Can you go into detail about that and share yes. this live and share this live on your community feed? But go ahead, brother. <laughs> oh, 
okay, the reason I say Moses is because he sent her the pictures. That's just common sense. He sent the pictures, and um, she got them, and I know where it came from because he's the person that I shared it with. Now, that, now the only thing I'm glad about is he didn't try to add nothing on to it and send some naked men because then he could have made me really look like I was gay or something. But, you know, he's showing you what type of character he is. It hurt me because I thought that he was a... Okay, okay, let's clarify this for the slow people in the back. How do we how do you know or feel that one hundred percent that our brother Pastor Jack sent those photos to um V S? Because he's the only person on God's screen that I shared them with. And you shared those pictures with Pastor Jack about sixty days ago. Yes. Okay, so within those 60 days, how long did it take Pastor Jack, allegedly, to share those pictures? After, after, um, after we had on, after we had our little fallout or whatever, and I texted him, I said, how is it, I texted him, I said, how is it that you can believe them and never talk to me about that? I said, you and I are friends. That's, that's YouTube stuff. You and I are beyond YouTube. We're friends. I was planning on flying out to his house to hang out with him for a few days. Well, we even talked about it even on my line about how you guys were going to, you know, come over here and we were going to cook and all kinds of stuff. I mean, this was months ago, so I'm just really, yeah. really in shock and it actually really dis like disappointed hearing about this. Well, the thing is, a person, when a person shows you who they are, you believe them, okay? And Jack, really what he was doing is just showing you, this is who I am. I'm really that person that'll talk about you behind your back. I'm really that person that'll burn you up. I'm really that person that will try to do whatever it takes to make you look like a fool, which he didn't, or whatever. But what he does is open up VS for lawsuits, or whatever, because that's her thing. I didn't post the pictures, she did. I shared it with an individual that I call a friend. So that's why I say, anybody who ever becomes a friend with Pastor Jack, you will be the worst person off. Because that man right there is the biggest cutthroat I've ever met in my life. I've never oh. met nobody like him in my life, ever. Oh, my God. Listen, you and I have had talks with him uh, on YouTube, on your lives. You and I have all talked on three-way off YouTube. Yes, yes, okay. yes, for, okay. for a while. So, you uh -huh. know, now, number one, let me make this very clear. Y'all listening to Nicole Reloaded, hashtag uh, Nicole Reloaded Returns. Um, please make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and all this good stuff. Now, um... I'm shocked by what my brother Larry Nelson is telling me. I mean, I, I can't. I, I, I don't even know what to say. I trust. It. Uh, man, I, I really considered, uh, you know, Pastor Jack as like, you know, uh, like a big, a big brother. Man, I'm yeah. not saying that I dislike him or anything. I'm just really in shock right now. And, well, and let me say this too for all your uh, people that are watching this or listening. Um, and you have questions, by the way, to um, Larry Nelson down in the chat. It's just a few. Robbie on the rails and Rochelle said, um, you know, good morning. How you doing as well as uh, Robbie on the rails and Rochelle, the Bayesian stroke um, survivor. Good morning okay. um, to you, Rochelle. But go ahead, brother. I'm sorry for interrupting. And any questions anybody asks, just read them to me and I'll, and I'll respond, okay? But uh, what I'm saying is this. I don't want in no way, shape, form, or fashion for us. your friendship with him to stop because of me. Because your friendship with him is maybe totally different than mine. I'm just saying what I ran across. That man right there that I called my friend uh, is a cutthroat. He will send you to prison. He will burn your name up. He will send you to hell if he could. You don't do a friend like Well, that, okay? I was learning him. Like, I feel like I have a, a friend. I'm closer to you than I am to him. That's the reason why I opened up to him was because of you. I'm not blaming that on you, but because of, you know what I'm saying? That was your, that was your brother. And, you know, and how you spoke very highly of him. So, right. You know, but, uh, you know, if we had yeah. to balance out loyalty and who I know the most, you, it's you. So. It, I'm not going to lie, it hurt. Because I, I know, you I'm, I'm hurt behind this. I'm hurt behind this too, Larry. Like, I'm, go ahead. My God. Well, as I said, the fact is, that was somebody I called my friend. And when you call some, listen, I grew up with the only child, okay? I never had a lot of friends. So when I call you a friend, when I say friend, I mean, give me your cash app. 
Because if you need some money, I got it for you, okay? Right. If you say it's a loan, I will expect it back when you say it's coming back because that's what friends do. When you need me, if you're at the hospital, I will be there. If you're in jail, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get you out or testify and say it was not you. That's what a friend is. That's I, I'm right. Not, I'm not a fair weather friend. I'm not going to go against you and talk about you getting your back. I am a real friend, okay? I am a real friend. And so I thought he was that. And so since he is, uh, since he did what he did, he showed me that people are not, uh, people are not who they really are. And he showed me that uh, in 2019, calling somebody a friend is something totally different than really what that title entails. Okay, anytime I could, and this is just an example, Nicole. Yeah. And this is just an example for you people to say, if you, Nicole, show me 12 pictures of men who've been chasing you down. Mm-hmm. This man, a man, one, two, three, four, and all these men are butt naked. Even though I may not want to see it, I may want to see it. Right. an example. But that's what, but Larry, that's what women like. Me and my homegirls, we do that. Like, girl, look at this dude, you know, what he's sending me, blah, blah, blah. No big deal. It's no nothing. And you delete it like, ew, girl, don't send me that. Ooh, he fine. You know he a dog. I get it. I get it. Go ahead. Well, he did that. And, uh, it just hurts. I mean, I just thought that that was I'm a just, friend, you know? I'm just so uh, blown back, Larry. Like, I'm trying to register in put this all together in my mind okay and for you ignorant people i can hear your thoughts i'm not immature and i don't think unrealistically i just try to really i think i try to think the best of people okay because i've been falsely accused of stuff and so is larry and if i would have believed half of the stuff that was said about him me and my brother wouldn't be on the phone and i don't want you to think about that you my brother man i don't give a fuck Excuse my language, I'm sorry. But you, you're you my brother, Larry. Me and you have talked, all, you know, off and on and watched each other for, you know, a decent amount of time now. And that's why I didn't come out and I didn't say anything. I didn't want to get caught up in it. I did not want to be, you know, because my main concern was you. Right. And I didn't, I'm like, Larry has been through enough. I've said this to Pastor Jack, um, and I, I said this to him, and I'm not throwing it underneath the bus because, you know, it's the truth. I just said, Larry has been through enough. And, you know, if this lady, Cheryl Burnett, is, you know, being dishonest, or even if she's telling the truth, it could be taken and twisted and flipped all the way out of control. And the, the uh, narrative about what you went through, what allegedly, which are not facts, what you, they accused you of with your daughter and all the, the lies that entailed that, okay, would have just added more fuel to the fire and people would have started making content about how you some freak nasty man again. Exactly. And, and one thing to add on to that one, uh, when V.S. started doing all these videos and he's on his way to jail, he did this to his daughter. What people don't realize too. is this, uh, what people don't realize is this, when she said that, uh, they had to, they pushed a the narrative that, you know, he did this to his daughter. My daughter got on there and said somebody told her when she was a year old in diapers, they saw me bouncing on my lap naked. Who does that? That never made sense to that never made sense to me. But the thing that was mind boggling to me, though, Larry, is um, it's not that that was her, uh, your daughter's um, memory. It was a memory of someone else's, your uh, ex's or whatever, you know, so-called memory or somebody. It was it was through third party. Well, the thing is. If you, if, and, and I don't have a problem talking about it, okay? The third party was my other daughter's mom, okay? I got a daughter named Anissa. Now, I want you to follow the story real good, okay? Okay. I'm going to make a long story short. Anissa is now 18. The daughter that was on VS is 24, Tanaya. Anissa, her mom, when she was in Chicago, was a prostitute, okay? And so my daughter, basically, uh, Anissa was in a home. And so she's in a foster home. I can't get her because she's she state ordered to be in the foster home. Because her mom took her fist, beat her at the top of her head and everything. And, uh, you know, 
uh, all five of her kids were in foster care, including my daughter. My daughter's the oldest. So uh, uh, it took a whole bunch of uh, strings that I had to push to go see her because, you know, my, her mom beat the hell out of her to put her in there. So my daughter's in one of the visits, and I can send you the pictures. She's crying, asking me, uh, Daddy, why, why, why am I in this home? I'm tired because she's been there like three years, right? And I can't get her out because this is some state type stuff. This is bigger than me. Her mom beat the hell out. I said, baby, I, I mean, she, she's almost 18, right? I said, I'm going to be honest with you. Your mom beat you. I mean, you, you, you remember. You know, she's not no three-year-old where you don't remember that stuff. She's, she's 17. I said, she beats you. I, I don't have nothing to do with that. I, I, I'm sorry what happened. Your mom beat you in there because your mom beat you. And this is what the state orders you to be in. I said, I got a house, I got a house for you if you can come here. And I tried to pull every string I could to have my daughter move in with me. But her my, my daughter was, her mind is wrapped around the fact that um, my my mom is, you know, she has what's called Stockholm Syndrome where the, the captor is always the good person. My mom is okay, she did nothing wrong. Mama's great, they just making this stuff up for mama, blah, blah, or whatever, right? And so, um, that's what happened, she uh, she just believed it, and um, they wouldn't let her uh, stay with me, so I said, well, my, do my, my, my door is open for you, and, um, you know, if you wanna stay here, you can. Well, her mom got a hold of that, her mother, and so her mom is what's called very vengeful. Mm -hmm. So she said, "So she said, well, if you're going to say this to my daughter, which is our daughter, I'll go find your other daughter and I'll make a lie up about you. So she contacts my daughter, you know, you know, I used to rape you. Now, keep in mind, when she met me, my daughter was five years old. Okay, so she didn't know my daughter when my daughter was in diapers. She met my daughter, my daughter was five. So, you know, I don't know why my daughter couldn't even understand that. But anyway, that's a long story. My whole point is, VS got the story or whatever. They twisted some, they talked to each other before the interview started and, and twisted the lies and made it seem like this, that, the other. And so that's why she was interviewing people telling her, uh, I just want to tell my truth, this, that, and the other. Come on now, what truth? What truth or whatever? My record is clean. In fact, I can get federal government jobs right now. I thank God for a, a clean record. But the thing is, these people's records are so messed up, so that's why they uh, do things like they do. It's stupid, but you know, so I Larry, how it works. So Larry, you you can pass a federal background a background check in all fifty states. I, I got a federal job right now that I had to pass a, a federal uh, background check for. Yes. When is and the la when is the last time that your background check? Um, the last time you had a background ago. check. So within the last 30 ago. days that you had a background check in all 50 states for a federal job position, which is federal, federal, federal. Yes. <laughs> all right. Now let me ask you this, my brother. Can I, wait, can I, can I throw one in real quick? No, go ahead. This is, when you, when you do certain federal jobs, if you have to work around the public. Right. One of the questions they ask you is, have you ever uh, molested any child in your life? Have you ever uh, uh, been associated with molesting a child? All these questions come out. Brother, I'm not All trying to be shady, but I told you this. I told you, you know, I looked you up. And you said that's what you should have done. You should have verified to see if it's true. You ain't on no child molester, um, no child molester uh, list. You're not on the what is it called? It's called the dog dog watch or something like that. Well, you're not. You're, the you're not on the, list in every this, state. Yeah, the every sexual city. assault. Yeah, you're not. This one. Uh, well, you know, I did a, a pretty decent, you know, look. But no, you're not on there. If you would have been on there, you would have came up. But go ahead. Oh no! You know what? And the thing is, uh, I she, told you about I told you about that months ago. So I told you about that months ago. Well, when she spent that narrative, uh, can you hear me pretty good? No, I hear you. I hear you very. I hear you very well. I'm just okay, trying to. Okay, your voice was fading out. Uh, oh, you can't hear me. When, when, yeah, I can now. When she okay. spent that narrative, the one thing that she did not tell you is this. Oh, by the way, the daughter that he's uh, that's claiming this, he didn't raise her. I was she was she wasn't really around me like that. So when when did this all happen? Okay, so she 
he, you know, she, uh, she just made up a lot of stuff. And that's why right now you can't pay me to talk about Because once I got a lawyer, I said, okay, now I got a lawyer. I knew my rights. I said, okay, now talk about it. I'm ready now. She's quiet now. You feel me? She's totally quiet now. Well, let me ask you a question, Larry. Are you still going forward with your civil suit? Or are you uh, are you um are you able to speak on that? Uh I will say this, uh we uh we abandoned the civil suit because she made a video saying all she's gonna do is quit her job. And so with a civil suit, O J got a, a, a eighteen million dollar civil suit uh, uh, against him from uh Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman's uh uh Ron Goldman, the, the family of Ron Goldman, the right. mom and dad. He, they haven't collected one dime because OJ is not going to work. So with a civil suit, if you don't work, you don't pay. And she's already said, well, shoot, I ain't going to, I'm just not working. I ain't going to pay. So what, how would you get blood from a turn if you can't? She's not going to work, so I want her to go to jail. So I don't, I don't care about civil suit. I don't need money. I work. I'm not, I'm not balling out of control. I work, though. But I, I want her to go to jail. That's what I want her to do. So, yeah, I'm going for criminal. Criminal court. Civil suit don't mean nothing. Okay, all she had to do is quit a job. She never had to pay. I want her to go to jail. Yeah, but a civil suit, well, you know, I'm not encouraging you or disencouraging you, but it can it can affect uh, the credit in in the uh, if the person eventually decides to purchase a home. I don't. Yeah. Okay, so it will have some form of effect, and also, too, with a civil suit, if the criminal aspect has not picked up on it, uh, if you win in a civil suit, um, it can make it a lot easier for the criminal charges to be able to go forth, from my knowledge. Okay. Well, well on, on this case, uh, it's easy to do that as far as uh, getting everything to, uh, um uh, more important court simply because all I have to do is show videos of her doing a mock children sending black flowers to a woman's uh, mama's grave that she don't know uh, calling Jay Wilson a child molester calling me one on multiple videos calling Sean Bradley one so she has a track record she has a major track record in fact what I found out I don't know if you know this when I talked to her ex-husband and I talked to him about five times on the phone he said the reason she ran out of Mississippi because she's actually a child molester Herself. Well, we gotta say, we gotta say allegedly, cause you know what I'm saying. Yeah, allegedly. He said allegedly she's a child molester. My God! Now, why would he say something like that? Because he knows her. He slept with her. He's been inside of her physically. Okay, so okay, so this is um um the young the young woman's ex husband. Yes. How long were they married? He didn't get off into that with me. I don't know, so I don't want to lie. Uh, but he did tell me that. Uh, what did? What, why past. did? Why did they get it? Well, I'm gonna ask you some questions. You say you at liberty to speak about it, or you're not. How, okay, okay. So I asked, how long were they married? You stated um, y'all didn't. You know, he didn't um, answer that, or you didn't yeah, get into that. Know. You don't know. Okay. Yeah. Do you know why um, V.S. Um, and her ex-husband was divorced? Because she's a quack. Okay. She's okay. Crazy. So basically when they got a divorce in a divorce decree, it will state that she is a quack in the divorce decree. <laughs> Well, I don't know about that, but um, he just told me a lot of crazy things she did. One of the things he told me, and I'll give you this one, he said that... Uh, All right, hold on, my brother. We have Ro Rochelle Jackson Brown. She is also now um, in the chat. Um, I would like for you uh, for you and her to talk, uh, to uh, come to a common ground and make amends. She, she doesn't have anything against you. She'll pretty much say what I said, but she can say how she feels better um, than I I can um, let me just give everybody an update in regards to what's going on thank you Rochelle Brown 
Thank you, my sister, uh, Rochelle Beijing, the stroke survivor. Y'all please check her out and support her. Um, she's all the way down to Barbados, and she needs a, a, a lot of support. And to sponsor her will be um, a blessing. Thank you, Felicia, um, my awesome moderator. We got Tooth in the building, um, actually not, you know, being actually good, so we don't want to kill the Toothers. That's, uh, anyway, the troll. And then we got Robbie on the rails. Now, we are listening to um, my brother Larry, Larry Nelson. Um, me and him have been communicating, you know, back and forth for a while. Uh, we have a, uh, a trust with each other. He reached out to me. And we're just basically having a conversation. Y'all can call it an interview or whatever. But this is just, you know, my big brother chopping it up with, you know, with his little sis. And, you know, me and him are both... Uh, I'm definitely in shock. Uh, I can't believe that uh, Pastor Jack. Uh, just go ahead and reiterate.